In this video, I will give you a full rundown of the video settings that are available for the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Let's start by looking at the, the front screen here. So I just reset all the settings. So this will look more or less like it would look for you when you unpack the drone for the first time. And here from the front screen, you can of course start and stop your video recording. And I'm using the Fredensborg Castle as a nice scenery for today's video. Let's start by looking at the bottom right of the screen. Here you will have some basic information and some settings that will allow you to set the resolution and frame rate for your recordings. The first information that is available, that is the storage. If you press that, you would see how much storage is actually available on your drone as it is right now on the SD card that you have mounted. Next, you will be able to change the resolution for the drone. Let's just shoot uh, some reference footage for you here, like five seconds of a video in uh, the maximum resolution of uh, 4K, which is uh, the maximum for this drone. So if we tap the option for the resolution, you would see that uh, you can record in 4K, 2.7K and 1080p. So those are basically the three resolutions that we have to play around with. Below that you have the frame rates and that's actually how many frames per second the drone is shooting. And you have uh, the three low frame rates, the 24, the 25 and the 30 FPS. And as you can see by the HQ indicator, these three modes deliver the highest quality. What you should choose depends on the region that you live in and other footage that you want to sync up against. I usually use 30 FPS. But you have, if you want to, the capability to actually go up to the double here. So you have the possibility to go up to 60 frames per second in 4K. Let's just fly a little bit around here. The 60 FPS option is not available in uh, high quality. So I would recommend, unless you have the need to slow down the footage, to do your recordings in 30 or less. Let's just fly it a little bit back and record a little bit with 30 FPS. So 4K, 30 FPS, that's my preferred resolution and frame rate. Next to the resolution and frame rate, there's the EV setting. And that will allow you to either underexpose or overexpose your footage. And the settings that we have here is in stops. So basically, if I go to, let's say, minus one, that would mean that the footage is underexposed by one stop, meaning halving the amount of light compared to zero. Most modern small DJI drones have a tendency to overexpose the footage. So my preferred setting here is something between minus 0.3 and minus one. So I make sure that I preserve the highlights. So I had to land the drone because I ran out of battery. Oops. So let's continue while I'm on the ground. Next to the exposure compensation value, you have a toggle where you can switch between auto and pro mode. So right now it's kept in auto, but if you press that option, you get access to the pro camera menu. And here you can see all the parameters that uh, some of them we have touched. But if I press on this, section there will be a menu like this that pops up where i will have the option to adjust a lot of interesting things and if i press sort of the aperture ring that is down here i will gain access to the actual camera parameters because this is a fixed aperture drone there's not that many things that you can adjust if you know the exposure triangle it consists of three things iso shutter and aperture and because the aperture is fixed on a mini 3 pro you can basically only adjust the ISO and the shutter speed. So those are available here and you can see, oh, and you can see the actual exposure level between these two parameters. So let's just play around with those. The shutter is basically how fast the camera is uh, letting light in. So if I increase the shutter speed, it will move a lot faster. So it will let in less light. So if I increase the shutter, make it faster, the image will be darker. If I go the other way, you can see that it's getting brighter. And in that way, I can manipulate my footage to either be over or underexposed. A little bit like we saw with the exposure compensation value. So let's just put this one 
with a shutter speed that is around neutral, maybe a little bit less than neutral exposure. So right now, the footage is underexposed with 0.7 stack. And just to show you the function of the ISO, you see if I move that slider and I increase the ISO here, you see that the image is getting a lot brighter. If you're flying in bright daylight like I'm doing right now, you're not really interested in that. So you want to keep that parameter at 100, which provides the darkest image, but also the best quality. That basically means that we run out of options. We can't set the ISO low on 100. That means that we only have one parameter left in the exposure triangle, and that is the shutter speed, which is the only parameter that's left that will allow us to adjust the amount of light that we are getting uh, into the sensor. So there's really no reason to use the pro mode apart from getting easy access to some of the other camera parameters that we're going to talk about. Let's get the drone airborne again because it was shutting down because of overheating sitting here on the roof. It's such a beautiful morning. It's 7.30 uh, a.m. So it's a, a really, really good time to go here and film. Just put the drone in the maximum height here. You can see you have Ashram Lake here in the background. Okay, so what I can do from here, if I insist using the pro mode, I can actually put it in auto from here. So right now I have neutral exposure and I can actually underexpose it from here. So let's just leave it here. So if we take the other option here in the bottom of this menu, you can see here that I get access to all sorts of stuff here. And one of the more interesting ones is uh, the white balance, which sets sort of the color of the footage. So I can adjust, I can make it completely blue if I put the slider towards the bottom here down to 2000 Kelvin. Or I can make it really, really warm if I shove the slider up to 10,000 Kelvin. And uh, if you don't know where to put this, I will make sure to provide a sort of a scale that will show you what is the right setting for the flying conditions that you're in. But if you don't want to go through that hustle and maybe forget that information, a simple trick is to simply put it in auto like this, and then it will automatically select the white balance that it thinks is right for the situation. And if you like the look and feel here, you can simply pull it out of auto and then it will stay at this setting and will not change during your flight. So if I just stop the video recording here and I press the menu here again, you can see what else I have access to here. I have access to the resolution. Again, I can mess around with that. I can mess around with the frame rate. I have the storage information. And then I have something that is pretty interesting. I have the color profiles because this drone is actually providing a color profile that will allow you to color grade the footage in post. And you basically have two options. You have the normal color profile. Let's just do five seconds of that. So, and then you have the decent like, which is, as you can see here on the screen, it's pretty flat and pretty boring when you record it. And that's because it's kind of squeezing all the information into the footage and trying to preserve the dark areas and the highlights. And that way you can color grade the footage when you get back home in your editing studio and really make it pop. So let's scroll here to the bottom. And uh, there are two other options. There's the coding format, H.264 and H.265. H.265 offers a better compression when you are recording in 4K, uh, but it's also harder for your computer when you want to play it back. So you can sort of select if you want to do that. Then there's the two video formats, the MPEG-4 and the MOV. I don't have any strong preferences there and I haven't been able to spot sort of the difference. So I usually leave that one in MPEG-4. I just want to show you one more really, really cool thing about the Mini 3 Pro and that's you can physically tilt the camera so you can record vertical videos. And the advantage of that is that it's actually true 4K when you record this. So you get the best possible quality instead of having a horizontal 4K video that uh, you kind of crop and thereby losing uh, some quality. So that is, a, that is a pretty, pretty awesome feature of this drone, especially if you're into posting that type of video. Oh, I actually forgot to mention something, and that is if you go under the video settings here, you have a slow motion capability. And if you enable that, you will be able to shoot 1080p in 120 frames per second. And that will allow you, if you're using a 30 FPS timeline, to slow down the footage by a factor four. So let's flip it into normal, like this. And then I will show you the remaining video settings. 
I had to switch camera because my main camera ran out of battery. <laughs> All right, let's get it up on again. You access the camera settings through the three dots in the upper right corner. So if you press the option that's called camera, you can see there's a lot of the parameters that we have seen before. There's the format with MPEG-4 and MOV. There's the color profiles and there is the coding format. And there's also the option to add subtitles. And that's a pretty, pretty cool feature that will basically store all the camera information as a video subtitles uh, to the video clips that you're doing. Not even if you're not using it, I would recommend that you have this one enabled. Then if you scroll down here, there's some interesting stuff that will help you additionally make sure that your footage is not uh, over or underexposed. The first one of those is the histogram. So if you just pick the histogram here, you would see that on the screen here, I would get sort of a chart that's a graphical representation of uh, what the, the drone is seeing. And if I change sort of the exposure here, you can see the chart is changing. It's moving to the left if it's dark. And if I make it bright, you can see that it's moving to the right. So th in this way, that will give you a very, very, because sometimes it's very, very hard to see the screen when you're out in bright sunlight. So it's very, very easy to look at this chart and you can move it to any location on the screen here and put it so it's very easy to see. That will give you a pretty good idea, a rough idea how your footage is exposed. And what you will want to aim for is something that is, has a little bit of a, yeah, space in each end of the scale. Another tool that you can use uh, to help yourself out here is, uh, if we go back under the camera settings here, is the overexposure warnings. And you can not see those right now, but what happens is that uh, if I start to, on purpose here, overexpose the footage, you would see that zebra stripes are being introduced into the UI. And if you just do a recording here, then you would see that these zebra stripes are only here on the interface to help you assess the exposure level of your footage, but they do not show up on the final footage. So that's also a very, very helpful tool. I know many of you are complaining about it when I'm using it in the videos, but they are there to help you. Then you have uh, peaking levels, and those are important if you want to assess uh, what is in focus uh, on the screen here. So uh, if I just put this in normal, you would not see this if you are running with autofocus, but if you switch this into manual focus like this, you can see you have indications here. And again, let's just do a recording here. So again here, you can see these are just tools that will show you which areas of the footage is in focus. Everything that's highlighted by red is now in focus. If I pull it up here, it will be out of focus. But in most cases, I just leave it in auto and then the drone will take care of it. But for some specific reason, if you want a specific part to be in focus, you can use this tool to help you out. Another thing that I can show you that is really important is composition. You really want to make sure to nail the composition when you're flying around and not having to mess with this afterward. And for that purpose, we have some grid lines that we can enable. And uh, the most popular one is uh, sort of the, the middle one here, which is the rule of third. And that basically divides the screen into nine equally sized squares or rectangles. The whole concept about the rule of third and composition, that requires a whole separate video. But you can use this grid basically to get your framing right and your composition right. You can also add the cross and that will help you, especially if you're going to do like, like a manual point of interest. So you have sort of the center of uh, the cross there to help you aim. <laughs> Keep your, keep your subject in center. We did cover the white balance before, but below that there's an option that's called style. And that one will allow you to mess around with the sharpness and noise reduction in the image. So let's just start the video here and uh, do a little bit of that. Mess around with the sharpness, putting it down to minus two. I can also put it up here to plus two, or I can make it stay neutral. Same goes with noise reduction. You can smoothen out the footage in areas where noise is introduced. I don't think that is that relevant when you are flying uh, with uh, ISO 100, but maybe it would make sense if you are messing around with night footage or so. I haven't been playing much around with this parameter. Finally, under the camera settings, you have the option to format your SD card if you need to do that. 
then you have a USB mode that you can enable. So I guess this will prevent it from shutting off automatically when it's sitting on the desk and you're trying to retrieve whatever is on uh, the drone or on the SD card. There's some caching here, which is uh, nice. That is basically uh, the caching here that will uh, help you have miniature images re in reduced resolution here. So when the max capacity is reached, all cached files are deleted automatically. So basically this parameter will uh, determine how many low res previews that you can store on the device. So these were all the camera settings for the DJI Mini 3 Pro. I know I did not cover ND fillers in this video, but I've made multiple videos about that topic. So I'll make sure to link one in this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you did like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.